Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to tone match the Line 6 Helix. So last week I posted a video on using this fantastic Fab Filter EQ Tone Match plugin in Logic. It works so well that I thought why not try it on some other stuff. This week I checked out the Quad Cortex by Neural DSP and it really is fantastic and it really captures an amp perfectly just as well as the tone match captures. Now the tone match is basically 24 bands of EQ. An impulse response, something like that, is many more bands. I can't recreate everything with tone matching. But here's my thought. I have a Princeton and I have a Captor X by two notes. I can record that Princeton direct with no cab. I can then load up the Princeton model in the Helix, which should be very close. But so far, I've not been able to get the Helix model sounding as punchy as my real amp. I'm sure with some EQ I can. Like I said, all this tone match is, is many bands of EQ. I'm sure I could do it. But as a shortcut, why not just tone match it? And in the process, we can learn what's different and what I might need to do in the future. Let's try it out. So this is Logic. And in Logic, I've recorded the real Princeton, again, through the two notes cap to X with no cab, into Logic. Let's go and check out what that sounds like. So this is the real Princeton by itself and I've loaded up Native. I am adding an impulse response here of a York Audio Deluxe Reverb 112 and it sounds like this. So there you go, that's a real Princeton. And by the way, without a cab block, it sounds like this. And with the cab block. Okay, so that is a real Princeton. That's the sound that I want. That's the sound that I'm used to hearing from my own amp. And again, if you own an amp that's in the Helix, you can do this too with any of the amps. Or you could do it from a recording from YouTube, something like that. It's really, really flexible, really, really powerful. So what I did next was I went to Native on track two and I actually recorded the same thing again. It's not an identical performance. This is uh, just me playing it again through the model in the Helix set to the same settings and it sounds quite different. Also, I've got the same IR there from York Audio. It's the same IR and the Helix model through that IR sounds like this. Now I haven't level matched yet, it's very important to do that and I'll do that at the end, but you can hear very clearly the Helix model is kind of woofy and muddy and doesn't have that same character that a real Princeton has. Now I'm not saying the real Princeton sound is the gold standard, but that's the sound I'm used to, that is what the real amp sounds like and I'm just trying to get this close to that. So I don't think the model in the Helix sounds like my amp. Let's use the tone matching to see if we can achieve this. So this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go over to my native track and I'm going to load up my Pro-Q3 plugin, which I absolutely love. Once again, Logic does have its own tone match EQ, but the Pro-Q3 is amazing. So I've loaded Pro-Q3 and it looks like this. This is on the native track, okay? Not on the real Princeton track. That's our reference. So go to Sidechain and choose Audio Real Princeton, the reference recording. Then go down to the analyzer and click on sidechain, EQ match, reference is sidechain. All I'm going to do now is play that recording back and you'll see it analyzing it in real time and comparing it to the, the actual amp. It's usually good to do about 30 seconds, but for today that's fine. Now what you're going to do is click on match. And it actually says to match these two, all it needs is 12 bands of EQ. Now what you could do is figure out what these are by clicking on them and manually enter it and manually enter it into Helix in some parametric EQ blocks. 
that would work exactly the same. But I'm actually going to turn this up to 24 bands. And if I use blocks of EQ and Helix for this, it will waste a lot of blocks. So rather than do that, later on we're going to make an impulse response of this. So we just have one impulse response that does the whole shebang. Click on Finish, and that is your EQ curve. This is actually very educational as well. Like This is what it's saying the difference is here. Okay, It's saying there's a lot of low cuts here, like below 175. There's some high boosts, there's some mid boosts. It's really interesting to look at this and see what's happening. But now let's compare them and see if these two sound the same. Let's go back to our tracks again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play native with the amp, the IR, and the Pro-Q3 match. And that sounds like this. Again, they're not level matched yet, but they will be later. Let's mute that and hear the real amp with the impulse response. Really good. Check that out again. Here's the native version. Here's the real amp. There's a little difference in the high end, but compared to what we had before with native without the Pro Q3, check it out. Night and day difference, right? Really dull, really muddy, really boomy. Now it's got that narrow kind of focus clarity that the original has. Very, very close considering it's just EQ. It's not like we're using a Kemper or a Quad Cortex for this. Really, really impressive stuff. So that's all well and good. And if you're using native on stage, you could actually load native with that Pro Q3 block and you could play on stage. Or if you're using native at home to record, you can record with this. This is a great way to match tones. Say you're doing a cover of a Bon Jovi song, find the isolated guitar tracks and use the tone match to get your patches closer. So get as close as you can and then use tone match to get really close. This is such a great tool. I think the Fractal has this on the, on the big one and I, I can see why. This is such a cool tool. Now, how would you use this in a Pod Go or an HX Stomp? Well, you can. Let me show you what you do here. I showed this on the acoustic demonstration that I did. I did do a few unnecessary steps, so follow this tutorial for the updated version. This is how you export this to use it in a, say, a Pod Go patch. First thing you do is grab the impulse response. Basically, it's a blank impulse response that you use to make your own. I'll leave a link to that below in the description. And I shall load mine in now, so I have it there. Okay, so there it is. I've just loaded it in, so I have it ready to go. Now, what you want to do is remove the track on the native track. That's what we're using here. So remove that file, that audio file, for now. And what you need to do is put that IR file there instead. So I'm going to drag that up. We'll use that as our template. Now, click on here. Make sure the other tracks are muted. Helix native is ready. Now, obviously, turn off the amp, but leave the IR and leave the Pro-Q 3. Then select that area of the track where you're going to be bouncing. So we can zoom in for this. And what you're going to do is just bounce that in place. Okay, so control click, bounce in place. Again, make sure the amp is off, the IR is on, and the Pro-Q 3 is on. Bounce in place, and that's all fine. Okay. Great, so that's your bounce in place. So the one you dropped in to start with, you can delete that. Drag up the one that was bounced in place. Now do just zoom in here. Trim the beginning so there's no latency. As close as you can. Bring it to the front of the track. And we're going to bounce this one out. Now obviously when we bounce this out, we don't want native on. We don't want Pro-Q3 on. So turn those off. And there you go. I'm just bouncing out this one track that we just made, this impulse response we just made, and it's all good to go. So now go to File, Bounce, Project or Section. You want to select 48 here, Normalize On, and click OK. Now I'm going to save that as Helix Tone Match. So I'll save that in Downloads. 
Now, we're going to test out to see if it worked. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that impulse there, and we're going to bring back that original recording that I made for the start of the demo. And I'm going to bring that up here to the native track. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm going to go into Helix on that track, into native, and turn it on. And then what I'm going to do is, rather than have our impulse response, which was the York Audio, I'm going to use our new impulse response, which is the one we created, number 42, remember? That's called Helix Tone Match. I'm obviously going to turn the amp back on again, and I'm not going to have Pro-Q3. Pro-Q3 can be turned off now. So this is now an amp and an impulse response, which can be loaded into Native, PodGo, HX Stomp, HX Stomp XL, anything you want you can now use this in, or indeed another modeler. Doesn't have to be a Helix, right? So let's go and see if it sounds the same. And now here is Native, and this Native has the same amp through a tone matched impulse response. And it should sound the same as the real deal. Here it comes. Fantastic. Now, it's not identical, but it's really, really close. It's a lot closer than the model was in the Helix. It's a lot closer than I could personally get without spending a lot of time using EQ. And it's almost the same, which I think is fantastic. Now, you can also go in now and do some more EQ. I could have loaded another instance of Pro-Q3 and manually adjusted the EQ again to get them even closer. But I mean, it's really, really close, and it's certainly close enough for me. And that's a tone I've not heard yet in my Helix, and I've just created it in 10 minutes with this plugin. I think this is great. There's so much more I can do with this. It's been great for acoustic. It's clearly great for electric. I'll do some more videos on some other amps and some other guitars in the future, so please subscribe and ring the bell if you're interested. But I think this is a really powerful tool to help us take our existing gear and create some really cool new sounds. What do you think? If you agree, let me know in the comments below. Go and try this out. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.